this point in time here, if you guys can come with us, we're gonna kind of take you to another place and tell you a little story. Okay, uh, this story takes place, I'm just doing this because I haven't had such a, a great, attentive, quiet audience in such a long time, years. So I wanna tell you guys this story here. Okay, what we were just singing about there in that last song here is this thing where the guy is skating out in the middle of the ice and he's sort of attached to his mirror image on the ice and he starts to have a, a battle with his mirror image and his mirror image reaches up and is trying to drag him down into the ice and right now we're kind of sunk down into the ice below the ice and down in this ice here we're going to kind of travel down into a different land. Now if you come with me, please mm -hmm. kind of picture off in the distance here a green field stretching off in the distance and the forest rising up over that way and a mountain coming up out of the forest and this is a place called Game Hinge. Now, so if you can imagine that we're all there, there, there now. Um, for thousands of years, millions of years, eons, Game Hinge was one of the most peaceful and beautiful places in the universe. People lived in uh, peace and harmony with nature, and these people were called the Lizard People, and everything was great. They had a god that they prayed to that lived up on top of the mountain, and his name was the great and knowledgeable Iculus. Now, Iculus had written this book for the people, and it was called The Helping Friendly Book, and it had been written so long ago that no one could even remember. It had been around forever, and the book sort of gave them their, their uh, reason for being, and it told them how to stay in peace with nature and peace with the trees and the land and everything. So, like I said, for eons, thousands of years, everything was great. They were living in beautiful harmony. Eventually, one day, this traveler came along, and he came from a sort of a later time, and he came along, and he saw all these innocent people. And since he had already been corrupted by you know, society and everything outside of this, this little community, he uh, saw the potential for enslaving these people and using them for power. So what he did was he stole the book from them, and he built a castle, cut down all the trees, and built this huge castle that, that raised out of the forest. Uh, he hid the book in the highest tower in the castle, and uh, declared himself king. And without the book, these, these people were pretty much helpless, so he enslaved them and gained a lot of power from this. Now, one day in another sort of part of the universe, there was this guy named Colonel Foreman. And uh, unbeknownst to him, he was shaving in his mirror one day and everything was cool, and, but his life was kind of, he was older, he's a retired colonel, and his life was kind of going nowhere. And he's walking his dog out there one day, uh, McGrapp. McGrupp, the watchful dog. And uh, as he's walking along, he's kind of going over the crest of this hill, and, and he sees this sort of, um, it's sort of a, just in the air, there's a little bit of a, an imaging thing here. Things kind of swirling around, and it caught his curiosity. And uh, so he walked towards it, came up to this thing, and as he got to it, he stepped through. And he found himself in a corridor that was leading as far as the eye could see down to a tiny pinpoint of light. At this point, he sings this little song. Knight who leaned against the wall in gnarly armor. He was on his way to see the king. Wilson, Wilson, Wilson. He led me to the streets of Prussia talking as he tried to crush a bug that scurried underneath his boot heel. He said there was a place where we should go. So he led me through the forest to the edge of a lagoon by which we wandered till we reached a bubbly spring. The night grew very quiet as we stood there. He lifted up his visor and he turned to me and he began to say, He said, I come from the land of darkness. He said, I come from the land of doom. He said, I come from the land of game manage, from the land of the big baboon. But I never ever going back there. And I couldn't if I tried, because I come from the land of lizards. He told 
told me that the lizards were a race of people practically extinct from doing things smart people don't do. He said he was once a lizard too. His name was Rutherford the Brave, and he was on a quest to save his people from the fate that lay before them. Their clumsy end was perilously near. The lizards would be saved, he said, if they could be enlightened by the writings of the Helping Friendly Book. In all of Prussia, only one existed. And Wilson had declared that any person who possessed it was a pro. He said, I come from the land of darkness. He said, I come from the land of doom. He said, I come from the land of gainage, from the land of the big baboon. But I never ever going back there. And I couldn't if I tried. Cause I come from the land of lizards. And the lizards, they have died. 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 Helping the friendly book, it seemed, possessed the ancient secrets of eternal joy and never-ending splendor. The trick was to surrender to the flow. We walked along beneath the moon. He led us through the bush till soon. We saw before our eyes a raging river. He said we can swim it if we try. And saying this the night over in Forgetting that his suit of arms would surely weigh him down And so he sunk And as his body disappeared before me I bowed my head in silence And remembered all the thoughts that he had done He said I come from the land of darkness He said I come from the land of doom He said I come from the land of game edge From the land of the big baboon But I never am going back there And I couldn't if I tried Cause I come from the land of lizards And the lizards they have
Okay, so uh, at this point, just to recap, here's what's happened. Colonel Thorburn has come down, and he's come into this corridor, and he meets up with this guy named Rutherford the Brave, who's this knight from the uh, from the uh, game henge here. Some of the uh, city and game henge is called Prussia, after the famous Prussia, and Wilson is the evil king. So. Uh, Colonel Forbin comes down and he meets uh, Rutherford the Brave and they walk down the they walk down the aisle and Rutherford starts to tell him all about the history of Game Hedge, the Helping Friendly book, Wilson, and uh, they go off and they stand next to this lagoon for a while and they go up and they're up next to this raging river, and uh, Rutherford he's not too bright falls into the river with a suit of armor suit of armor on, sinks to the bottom. So uh, Colonel Forbin. Standing by the side of the river, doesn't know what he's going to do. Rutherford is sinking at the bottom of this raging river. But suddenly, he looks across the river, looks across the river, and he sees this huge sort of hairy monster, and then this other four-legged beast with a beautiful woman on it, who comes riding up towards him. And this is Tila. So Tila comes riding up towards him on this thing called the Multi Beast, which is a big, hairy, four-legged creature with long, sort of curly hair that's pulled these got these sort of brown splotches and white splotches all over it. She comes riding up, and her sidekick of sorts is this guy named the Unit Monster. Now, the Unit Monster is a huge, strong beast, and he dives into the water, swims to the place where Rutherford the Brave has sank, and lifts Rutherford up, saves him, brings him over to the shore, and puts him down. Now, Rutherford is recovering. Colonel Foreman, in the meantime, is not paying any attention to this at all because this woman, Tila, has ri ridden up on this multi beast and he's looking up at Tila and he's falling in love. He's never seen such a beautiful woman before in his life and he looks up at her and he's kind of got these eyes and he's looking up and he starts to sort of imagine this little song going through the inside of his head. In her gaze, I crumble 
beautiful woman realizes he's in love doesn't know what he's going to do about it but in the meantime you've got this night gear Rutherford the Brave who's basically half drowned and they've got to get him back to uh, where he comes from so they decide to pile him up on top of the multi beast and go for a little ride through the woods so they they pick the, they pick the night up Okay, they pick the knight up, they put him on the back of the multi beast, they put Colonel Florbin up there, and they put Teal up there, and they start to ride through the woods. So they're riding along through the woods, and it's getting darker and darker as they go deeper into the woods. And Teela starts to look down here at Colonel Florbin and explain the whole situation to him, telling him that uh, Wilson, you know, came in, took over, took the book, enslaved all these people, and has turned their, their life into a living hell. So what's happened is this band of revolutionaries has sort of started to, uh, started to crop up, and they're in the woods. It turns out that Rutherford the Brave is in with the revolutionaries. He's sort of used to work in the army with uh, Wilson, and now he's kind of a spy. Tilo, of course, is one of the leaders of the revolution. Um, she starts to tell him about this other guy who's really the head honcho here, Aaron Wolf. Now, as they ride through the uh, woods, they get closer and closer, and eventually they come upon this little clearing, and they see sort of an encampment, tents set up all over the place, and uh, camouflage and the whole deal. And in the middle of the clearing here is this guy, Aaron Wolf. And as they look, you know, hatred in his eyes, this evil guy, and he's standing there with his fist raised in anger, and he's singing this, this song here about Wilson here.
singing this song about how much he hates Wilson and everything. Teela gets down and uh, introduces herself, or excuse me, introduces um, Colonel Foreman to Aaron Wolf and they start talking, you know, this guy's okay. And so uh, Aaron Wolf starts to tell Teela some bad news and that's that, you see, they have this whole revolutionary group here, has little people that are, people that are, are hooked up with Wilson's regime and everything in order to, to um, help the... Just looking at this guy down here. These people are in with, with uh, Wilson's regime, and the whole way this revolution is happening is basically by people within that work within the um, Wilson's whole crew there. One of the guys is this guy named Mr. Palmer. Now, Mr. Palmer is basically an account financial guy, and he's been stealing funds from Wilson and shifting them to the revolutionaries in order to fund this whole revolution. The bad news, of course, is that Wilson has just found out about this whole thing, and, and Mr. Palmer is about to get... Um, hung in the public square. So meanwhile here, these guys are the thing, and we go to the public square and to witness this hanging. Now in this strange land, instead of a normal hangman, they have this sort of electronic um, hangman machine that comes out called the ACDC bag. And it's got this black bag over its head, and it's kind of this robot thing here, rolling out on wheels. And Mr. Palmer is standing there, and the scaffolding on the thing with the noose is coming down around his neck, and Wilson is standing on the side. The evil Wilson is looking at him, and uh, they get they get ready for the hanging here. And Wilson sings this little song to him. Who would have 
on it. That's where I am. No future at all. Don't sweat it. That's where I am. Whoa, carry me down, 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 down. And that's the other one for him. So things are starting to look pretty bad for the revolution here. So meanwhile, back at the camp, th people are talking. Things are things are looking worse and worse. And uh, basically, what it all comes down to is that Colonel Florvin he sees a sees an option that no one's has seen before, and he decides that he's going to um, he's going to go to the mountain. He's going to go straight to the source. So he's going to climb up this mountain here, and he's going to try to find Iculus. Now, no one even knows if Iculus actually exists because this book has been around for so long, it's all become legend. And uh, no one has ever dared to go up on the mountain because it's sacred land. But things have gotten so desperate that Colonel Forbin decides he's going to climb up the mountain and try to find Iculus himself. So at this point in time, he leaves the revolution, the revolutionaries behind, leaves the camp, and starts wandering into the forest towards the mountain in the distance. <laughs>
heard the crack of thunder And the rocks began to crumble overhead And tumble down the mountain to this one swamp that lay beneath the jagged cliffs through which his path had led And the earth began to quake beneath his feet And a mighty mountain changed before his eyes And he stood amidst the sea dust and rents and stones cascading down the mountain And a thousand birds were headed for the sky Whoa. The sacred creed will be yours And if you wait until tomorrow The sacred creed will be yours To power, yours to seize and to obey And he's looking up at Iculus, and Iculus is looking down, and Iculus says, okay, I'm going to help you out here. I'm going to send for my friend, the famous Mockingbird. He's going to go get the book out of the castle, steal it for you, and bring it back. But he sends it along with his warning, and he says, you know, a book that has all the knowledge inherent in the universe is not necessarily such a good thing, so you better watch out. Because uh, the people here, the lizard people in Game Hands, used to have this book, and uh, they were so innocent that they didn't really see the possibility of of using it in any other way except for good ways. Now this guy Wilson has come along with his corrupted ideals, enslaved them. They're all, you know, it's terrible that he's done this, but the thing is that he's kind of brought this germ with them. So Iculus tells uh, Colonel Ford, we're not gonna send this book down here. You better watch out who gets their hands on it because uh, you never know now. So at this point in time, the famous Mockingbird comes flying out of the sky, flying out of the sky, flying out of the sky, and he goes over to the castle and he gets the book and he brings it back. So here it comes. 
steals it from Wilson and brings it back, flies to the camp of the revolutionaries. Now Aaron Wolf is standing there and he's surrounded by sort of his cronies and the Mockingbird comes and lays the book at his foot and he sees it down there and he starts to get this glimmer in his eye. It's the book, the book that he's been after for years. So he picks up the book, has it in his hands and he starts to get this idea in the back of his head. He said, now that he's got the book, if he could just get rid of Wilson, then he could have all the power himself. So he thinks about a friend of his that lives way in the depths of the, the heart of the city of Prussia, the meanest, most ugly guy in all of Prussia. And he's going to hire this guy to help him kill Wilson. So he needs this guy to knock Wilson off. So he goes into town and he finds this guy. And this guy's name is the Sloth. So uh, now he's going in to find the Sloth to help him kill Wilson.
So uh, the sloth comes in there, takes care of Wilson, and now Wilson's dead. And so uh, things go on from here, and there's lots of other, uh, lots of other songs that go along with this story. We're going to do one more tune here that, if you can picture now, we're going out to the edge of uh, the edge of Game Henge here, and you've got this shepherd out there. And it's years later. Everything after that went pretty much downhill in Game Henge, and never got any better. It became sort of a war-torn thing. And the shepherd is going to sort of tell his uh, his story about the the way things happened and wrap the whole thing up here so come with us here out into the edge of the the edge of the of the Baltic Sea. The teeth of time have stowed the rhyme of how things should be. My cave, my house, my turning wheel, my, my little docking pup. The march of Colonel Forbin and his fleet hound called the grub. collected in my sink I tie my nose with spandex hose before I get a drink we lie on frozen warthogs with this poison in our minds while the ferns that spot our children are encased in orange rind All times and seasons are the reasons People and their clans Have stowed the famous mockingbird With glue and rubber bands They writhe and cry in agony As Rutherford the Brave Chokes Tila and the unit monster Managing to save The spotted stripers, multi-beast And thereby she is brave I'd like to get his autograph, but he looks too much like Dave. He looks too much like Dave. He looks too much like Dave. He looks too much. 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 